Taras Pluskin here from a Top Shelf Aquatics Farm. I could not be more excited because today I, I couldn't help myself. I walked by the retail system and we have a bumblebee grouper. And for whatever reason, I'm nuts for bumblebee groupers. I mean, look at him. He's so perfect. He's just staring. Oh, fish. 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 What is a fish? It's kind of, uh, sounds kind of silly a little bit, especially for me to be asking, what is a fish? Well, a fish is uh, that, right? It's got fins, it swims around, it breathes water, except uh, that's not necessarily true. Fish is kind of a term of convenience. If we, if we hunt, if we search for a collective attribute of all fish, you know, all fish breathe water. Uh, not true, betas, betas breathe air. Uh, Arapaimas breathe air, so that's not true. Uh, all fish live in water, that's not, True, the mud skipper kind of throws a wrench in that. And also whales and dolphins live in water. I mean, are they fish? No. Um, all fish have cold blood. That's not true. Tuna and swordfish have warm blood on a bigger or lesser scale. Uh, all fish lay eggs, not true. Guppies give birth to live young. If we really hunt, we find more things that separate fish and destroy that term of convenience than things that make it useful. So today at Top Shelf Aquatics, we would like to start uh, a bold series on what is a fish. Trying to chop up all these different fish that you see in our store and stores across the nation and, and chop them up into the individual different families that truly have collective traits that you can kind of know them by. And by knowing these fish better, these beautiful fish better, what they need and their collective traits, we can make more educated decisions both on what fish to purchase, what fish to put in our aquarium, and how to feed and cater to the needs of those fish. So today, I could not be more excited. Let's start, what is a fish, with one of my favorite fish families, this, the, the serenity. These are the groupers, the basslets and the sea bass. The bumblebee grouper behind me is a wonderful example. Now let's look at some collective characteristics of this family as a whole. They are fish eaters, they're carnivores. This thing will eat anything that fits into its mouth and will continue to do that until it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's because it is a giant cardiac stomach that is just designed to cook down big invertebrates and smaller fish and turn that into grouper tissue. They've also designed themselves to have very, very good eyesight. He's checking me out right now and he's already using his brain to figure out that I might be a source of food or that food might be coming his way. Fascinating. Uh, they are also relatively uh, associated with structure. Both sea bass, groupers, and basslets can all be found associated with reefs, both coral, rock, and oyster reefs. They like to swim around structure. They like to eat the things that live in structure. So, um, we can think about some ways we might want to keep these in the aquarium. We want to be offering them big, meaty prey items, frozen food, bigger live feeds even, like grass shrimp and brine shrimp, moving on towards uh, potentially offering them uh, uh, high quality seafood items, uh, such as you know, frozen uh, fish and shrimp and squid and all manner of things that you're gonna do to get this fish up to weight because it's not gonna need to eat all the time, but when it eats, it wants a good quality, big meal so it can grow and be happy. A um, Couple other things I love about the serenity uh, there, beautiful, uh, big uh, food fish. In many parts of the country and in the world, these fish get massive members of this family. Um, so they're good sport fish, they're good for eating, and they're actually even farmed as delicacies. My first experience with groupers was uh, learning how to grow Goliath grouper over in the Philippines and trying to train in some of their hatchery processes, which caveats me over to this. Another wonderful aspect of the serenity is that a growing number of them are being offered sustainably aquaculture. So things like basslets uh, and grandmas can all be sustainably aquacultured relatively easily and provided from birth all throughout their life to the aquarium industry. So the need to wild capture members of this family are ever decreasing. There's also some you know, caveats with this because it's not ubiquitous, but most uh, grouper and sea bass larvae actually start off with little pectoral and dorsal fins that are long projecting spines. So they often spear each other and as they grow, they like to cannibalize each other. So there are many uh, obstacles when it comes to growing these fish, but it is extremely possible and beautifully aquacultured specimens are growingly available in the hobby. So if you're trying to keep one of these incredible fish, I often suggest that people have a fish only system or a system that has lots of nitrate loving corals or a big honking refugium attached to it. So you can compensate for all the protein you're gonna be needing to give to your titan.
right. So the Serenity, the groupers, the basslets, the sea bass, aquaculture, kings of the reef, um, big predatory fish. I absolutely love them. I look forward to talking about them and many, many, many other types of fish offered in our retail store, helping us out in the farm. And yeah, we'll see you next time.